The Monerotopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by WizardSwap.io, a non-custodial cryptocurrency exchange. Happy weekend. <laughs> Happy weekend, man. Today's a marathon. It's a good show. <laughs> It is. It is. Well, actually, we're only at two hours and twenty three. We, we've, uh, I think, we average about four hours <laughs> these days. So we're doing pretty good. We're on track. We're on track for a for typical show. Yeah. Are you still in Italy right now? I am. I am. I'm still in Sicily. We got oh, stuck wow. here a couple extra days because of the volcano erupting. Um, yeah, taking full advantage of it. it's been fantastic. Oh wow! Well, I kind of hope that it's going to keep erupting for another week. I <laughs> know, I know, I know, I know. But my fiat it's job is it isn't really uh, loving loving it. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, man, take it away. Take it away with the news. Okay. So let's get into uh, this week's news. The first thing Forbes posted an article on Monero saying that almost no one uses it. Um, and I'm going to read off a quote from um, their article. They said, "One thing is clear: eight years in." Few people actually use Zcash, so they kind of compared. It was about uh, Zoco, and then they talked about Zcash and Monero. Uh, but yeah, so Zcash, the protocol earns about thirty dollars a day in fees and processes just three transactions a minute. Its total fee revenue of, of two thousand twenty three was only fourteen thousand. It's not alone in its uh, struggles, as Forbes pointed out in March. Numerous billion dollar crypto zo- zombies roam the digital landscape. Blockchain zombie Monero. Another privacy coin developed in 2014 has a 2.7 billion market cap, but like Zcash, almost no one uses it <laughs> or pays fees. So, yeah, according to Forbes, yeah, Monero is a billion dollar, multi billion dollar privacy coin that nobody uses it. And they also said that the big question facing Zcash and others is whether there is enough demand for privacy coins in the first place. So, um, yeah, the, Maybe they're talking about Forbes themselves and the people working out there. And probably there's no demand there for privacy coins. But if you get outside the bubble, uh, there is a high demand. Of- I don't know. The live stream right now is showing 550 live views, uh, 382 on X and 31 on YouTube. So we, we do exist. We are real. And we're yes. growing. And actually, that's a good time to segue into Monero Topia for just a second. So, guys, if you haven't bought your tickets yet, uh, you can go on the website, click on Buy Ticket, and you can buy VIP. So, let's say that, uh, which I highly recommend because um, then you get to go to the dinner with the speakers and everything. So, um, it's a really an amazing time. Then, if you go to Add to Cart, so then you go to View Cart with code Tony. 24 you're gonna get percentage off your uh, monero topia so ticket so go ahead and use uh tony 24 and you're gonna get your discount for the tickets in case you haven't yet okay so now let's go back to uh cyber trace so cyber trace <laughs> they had an article originally posted in 2020 august 31st which um has disappeared they um they claimed that uh, they could tra- track Monero, and now it just <laughs> it just disappeared. Um, interesting, interestingly enough, is that Mastercard actually owns CypherTrace. And um, for people watching the the show, I'll pull up a picture. I've actually seen this ad of Mastercard and CypherTrace when I was in the, the airport last, uh, which caught my attention. It was interesting. Um, so yeah, they had an article claimed that they had Monero track tracing tools. Um, and they were saying how with 45% of darknet markets now using Monero, that was four years ago, probably way more now. Uh, the second favorite cryptocurrency of choice among criminals just behind Bitcoin law enforcement interest in Monero tracing has soared. So made a bunch of claims, um, but they no longer mention Monero tracking <laughs> because they couldn't in the first place anyway. So um, that is that is interesting. As Moneroers predicted... Yes. Long time ago. Yeah. Now Binance has extended XMR withdrawals until first of September. Um, so, what I would want to say here is just if you have any Monero on exchanges and centralized exchanges, take it off. Don't use them. There's other ways of getting your Monero. Um, but if you have any in Binance, you have until the first of September to withdraw it. Uh, right now, you can't buy anymore. 
in Binance and after September 1st, you will not be able to withdraw your Monero, Bitcoin Gold or Mobile Coin. So just be careful with that and just be careful in general when you use uh, centralized exchanges because in the past, um, Binance had numerous episodes in which you just couldn't withdraw, like all of a sudden, like you wanted to withdraw your Monero, take it off and you just couldn't, which, which is a little bit scary. So be safe and uh, just I would advise that, that you just wouldn't use them. The next thing is really, really cool. Um, so this is a heat map. Uh, we have um, a community member, friendly neighborhood, Lebanon, um, and he made a Kuno to find a project that he's working on. He wants to make, so KKP had uh, a heat map a while back for all businesses except Monero, and he said it just got sunset. And he's working on a local heat map for business except in Monero and Lebanon, MENA, then EU, and then the US. And actually, we have Doug in the com in the comments, and he said, "How about adding the businesses to the XMR Bazaar biz listing map?" I uh, sorry, got traction. So honestly, uh, that'd be awesome if we can implement the, the heat map into XMR Bazaar and really have have it nice so people can just go. I have no idea what this heat map is he's talking about. I don't think Cake ever had a business heat map. Yeah, I'm assuming he's talking like the the business listings we have on X. Right? Is that what he's ex describing? I'm, I'm not sure. I, I don't remember a heat map. I just yeah. I, I reached out to him. To, like yeah, if he yeah, if he should uh, we'll, we'll uh, I don't know. I'd, I'd fund a Kuno for him to go uh, try to add, grow the XMR Bazaar business listings. That would be that'd be something I'd be behind for sure. Yeah. No. The, yes. For sure. That that'll be awesome because then you can just look around and see who's accepting Monero. Maybe you'll go to a, a store that you haven't even thought about and you just go in there because they are accepting Monero and you're actually going to purchase stuff. So, uh, yeah, if this gets implemented into XMR Bazaar um, or if you guys work together, that'll be awesome. Yeah, I mean, we already have the heat map. I think if what he's talking about, we already have a, a quote unquote heat map on there. It's a mm -hmm. map that shows all the local business listings. That's how. Uh... That's how I discovered the Monero accepting grocery store in, in New York City. Shortwave tip, 25 cents. XMR Bazaar now has 565 total listings. Wow, that's awesome. Wow. Shortwave has been uh, our, our power user for sure. I think he's I think he's accomplished the most uh, trades, like sales on XMR Bazaar, which is very nice. Yeah, he, he's amazing. <laughs> Just a, it must be so... I'm, because he's blind so you know like given his condition he does so much and he's he knows so much like it's really inspiring to be honest like when he um you know wanted up the um, pdfs for the books because you know he can't he can read it's really inspiring so that's that's amazing very true shortwave we love you man yeah man we love you man uh shout out to shortwave um now let's talk about this is an interesting post so Politico posted on on um, X, them law lawmakers want to wait until after Harris wins to set policy agenda. Yeah, so let's wait until they get elected and then we'll show you what uh, <laughs> what we want to do. But I mean, you can just make your promises now and you can break them later. <laughs> or make a couple now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but that, that's, uh, that is very, very uh, sketchy and very... A very frightening um, statement to you know wait until you get elected and then okay here's what I'm gonna do uh, yeah uh, done well wow, okay this one is uh, really interesting too so Marathon has just begun stamping each Bitcoin block it mines with made in USA um this moves raises this move raises concerns about bitcoin's fungibility when certain coins can be identified and traced back to specific sources it compromises their interchangeability so now you'll be able to look at bitcoin blocks and you know with time oh this is made in usa oh this is made in uh china okay maybe i don't want this one because it's gonna get flagged in this region of the world or um yeah so it's it's really sad that people don't wake up to how important fungibility is in a, in a currency that you're going to use and this is really serious like your coins could be tainted just you know or blacklisted just because they have a made in and whatever country it's it's from um yeah so that's that's crazy but obviously in monero we don't have this problem so 
Uh, moving on, um, XMR Street launched the campaign on August 16th uh, to get HYC, CMS, and Monero Times account released from permanent suspension. Uh, and he tagged Elon Musk, then drug dialed me or gets us back, um, tagged Elon again as well and X to unsuspend uh, both of um, those accounts because um, they did a lot uh, for Monero and they were really active. So um, hopefully that's going to happen um, eventually. Hopefully we can get their attention. Now this guy, Super Testnet, um, he, he got quite a bit of traction on his post. He posted basically, um, it was an image um showing the differences between monero and lightning so the first thing uh, publishes all transactions by default I'm, I'm gonna read monero first and then i'll go into lightning uh so monero publishes all transactions by default yes encrypts the sender <laughs> no uh, this is all according to him okay uh encrypts the recipient no encrypts the full amount no encrypts peer-to-peer -peer traffic no uh which that's crazy. Those are crazy claims, obviously. Uh, then we go into Lightning, and he said, publishes all transactions by default now, encrypts the sender, encrypts the recipient, encrypts the full amount, encrypts peer-to-peer -peer traffic, yes, for Lightning. And obviously, people, people responded to this because it's just, um, they're just lies. So Untraceable said, Lightning, <laughs> nodes share data with government and chain analytics, yes. Difficult or not possible to send amounts over $1,000, <laughs> yes. Centralizing network design, yes. Most user funds not self-custodially held, yes. Is the second layer requiring potentially costly opening slash closing channels on chain? <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so he replied back, um, body, um, then also Seth. So let's go into Seth reply uh, response. He said, somehow I respected this guy in the past, but it's become crystal clear from his disingenuous campaign that wholly ignores Lightning's privacy issues and makes up uh, privacy issues that he has some ulterior motive to benefit here. I spent one and a half hours on a call with this guy where he got every aspect of this explained to him and he proceeded to ignore all of it and kept keep lying for internet cloud. I'll publish, publish that debate later today. I actually reached out to him to try to get him to come to Monerotopia as a speaker. And he was uh, he was very interested, and I think he would have done it, but it's just it overlaps with uh, a Bitcoin conference in El Salvador. Mm. I was like, ah, I, I would have loved to have him. It, it's nice to have a, uh, um, I don't know, a, a skeptic, the ultimate skeptic, or I don't know, just somebody to represent the other side, even if he's uh, exaggerating a lot of things. It leads to some good good discussion, but he's been dishonest in his approach um yeah he I almost seems like a troll but yeah, yeah i haven't fully i haven't super. fully tuned in yeah tux maybe you fully tuned in i haven't really followed it i know a lot uh body had a good conversation with him and i think body he did body. um seth if you scroll down on that thread mm -hmm. tony um yes. if you just scroll down there's uh there it is there's an opt-out episode that seth hosted between luke parker and super testnet um and luke does a good job um at just explaining monero's features of course and why simply saying something's not encrypted doesn't really mean anything uh like super test net keeps trying to make out to be where his definition of encryption and how something's not private if it's not encrypted in his specific definition means it's not private um and luke kind of debates him on that um and it's just kind of weird like he almost seems like a troll but at the same time he seems very sincere in his arguments and and his viewpoint and there was a really funny comment somewhere on that thread uh that somebody was saying don't mistake autistic fixation for malice <laughs> which <laughs> is kind of true um yeah it's it could be it's as simple as that <laughs> yeah i haven't i haven't really even heard him speak or you know listen to i just saw that saw the tweets but uh um yeah we invited him to Monerotopia, but he won't be able to attend but uh if you guys know another good skeptic to have let us know we had peter todd last year he kind of played that role so looking for somebody to replace peter todd this year let's get peter todd again but i think it'd be good to get a you know get somebody to play that role it's good to have people with opposing views as long as they they make some sense but when you're just lying 
Yeah, so it's, it's gotten a, absurd. He's being yeah. like incredibly misleading with this yeah. picture, and there's some really funny. If you here, I'll I'll send one a little bit. He's ignoring reality. Is yeah. what he's you know. So it's like he's he's pointing out things that may factually be true on their own, but ignoring the larger picture and reality of what the situation is. Also, just to add, I love the fact check from X on the post. The it's community like note is really hilarious. It's... Yeah, who, who wrote that? That's great. Yeah, that's um, yeah. So the fact check is saying this is misleading. Monero hides amounts via confidential transaction transactions, hides the sender and recipient with ring signatures and self addresses, and obscures peer to peer um, traffic via Dendelian plus plus. So yeah. Well, um, I mean, uh, you know, we're just seeing we're seeing a lot of this these days of you know, attacks, <laughs> social attacks kind of against against Monero from the Bitcoin tribe who are fearful of the fact that Bitcoin is failing as digital cash. We got um, so I don't have a signal on my. Oh, you're going to send it directly in the private chat. Yes, if you can. Yeah. Okay, give me, it's actually really funny. It's a so funny good. response. <laughs> no, it is really funny, actually. So, yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> what is this? It's really funny. Give me one second. Um... <laughs> I will mention Xanobull. Since he tips, Xanobull tipped 50 cents. If Xano remains with a proof of work slash proof of stake hybrid system i want to buy all right shilling xano for your 50 cents we'll take it so uh <laughs> untraceable posted a picture and on the left side you have roll lights <laughs> on the right side you have a frog watch and <laughs> they won't sell time but one is an affordable and one is in a frog. <laughs> the frog watch is superior <laughs> clearly Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, moving on. So we have uh, Freknix. I think that's how you say his name. Uh, blockchain dev, uh, privacy advocate. So he actually gifted to uh, someone's birthday. He said, oh, <laughs> am I the coolest or lamest uncle ever? And there's a picture of, um, of a birthday card saying happy 15th uh, birthday. But to receive your birthday <sighs> gift, Send them a narrow wallet and text me your wallet address. And then he gave them a bunch of different websites, uh, monero.com, gimonero.org. So uh, that's not an amazing gift from your uncle to get Monero. So that, that's really awesome. He's uh, so see, he's definitely the coolest uncle ever, not the lamest. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I have a few family relatives that have lost <laughs> quite a bit of Monero in the past from oh. from pa from past pre similar the, uh, the fishing expeditions. <laughs> well, you know, not real ones though. Uh, <laughs> you know, they don't they don't appreciate what they're getting at the time. It it is a problem. Yeah. Oh, trust me, it very much is. We deal with this all the time, even though we have like three scary warnings that the users get when they set up yeah. a wallet on Cake Wallet. Uh, we people just don't save it, <laughs> and I yeah. know uh, don't realize it until it's too late. Okay, okay. Yeah, happened to me too. <laughs> so, happens quite well, Rustin is asking where's the best place to buy Monero? You could buy it right through Cake Wallet using one of the instant exchanges they have built in, uh, is a good way. So, if you could obtain another crypto like Litecoin or Bitcoin Cash or whatever it is, and then use that to swap it into Monero is one easy way. Obviously, selling goods or items for it is the ideal way. Participating in the Monero circular economy, go on XMRBazaar.com, create an account, yeah, sell something. Yeah, there might be some listings on there on XMR Bazaar. For uh, I haven't checked a look at them yet. Um, but yeah, if you're in the if you're in Europe, um, if you're in like the specific European economic region, uh, DFX is recommended because you can buy up to like 900 euros of XMR per 24 hours with no KYC. That's you have to problem. use a bank account, but they don't have to process, like do the actual KYC ML processing of like your ID or anything. So, um, mm -hmm. and you can buy XMR with that. Uh, so it's, I recommend that if you're in Europe. 
No, he said he's in Liberland, California. <laughs> uh, Kraken. You could use Kraken in California, right? I'm sure. You can't use it here in New York, but in California, you, yeah, you use... use Kraken. Uh, they are yeah. full KYC, but that is an option if you want to buy a lot of Monero with USD very quickly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, if you want to obtain it without KYC, best best ways to do that is obtain other crypto and swap it into Monero or to sell things directly for Monero or trade cash for Monero um, using things like XMRBazaar.com and other means. Very cool. Yeah. So moving on, we have the last two things for the week. Um, this is really, really awesome. So... Um, Two months ago, it was posted on Monero that a Monero stress test is uh, coming. Uh, so the run a stress nest node to improve Monero. Uh, that is since we had the suspected spam transactions. And um, it showed that Monero nodes do not cope with high transaction volume as well as expected. And so we had to conduct some tests, uh, some uh, stress net. So a test net fork that stress net has been created to stress test a node and diagnose performance bottlenecks. Um, you can participate, and the testing has begun, well, uh, quite a while back, so on June 19th. Uh, but now I want to go back to a post from uh, eight days ago um, with updates on the uh, stress nest so far. So testing has been successful, and plans are already in place to continue the network for at least another two months. While we have reached the end of the originally planned time frame, there's an enduring need for further testing. For anyone willing, your sustained or new participation is welcome. So you can actually partake in this. Uh, the stress test is resetting on August 10th. Um, so a bit back now, but we're forking the test net. And the results are, as a result of testing, developers have produced a set of improvements. Uh, so there have been improvements over this already. These cover correctly recognizing blocks as valid during abnormal operations, increasing payment and performance during large transaction volumes, and discussing synchronization design. And there's a couple links um, that you can you can click on and read further into this about um, block. Like one is a blockchain fixed stamp fails, causing all blocks to be permanently invalid on Daemon's uh, transaction pools, crypto node core. Um, largest block was almost eight uh, megabytes. Uh, most transactions in a block um, is 4,909. Most transactions cleared in 30 consecutive blocks, um, 100,863 transactions. Uh, so there's a lot of information. And um, so, yeah, it's going to be going on for the next two months. It's going to be extended. And uh, it's really awesome that um, the community looked at what happened and they decided to take the matters into their hands and um, stress test it and actually, you know, try to overcome it. This is very, very important for uh, the future of Monero. Um, yeah, so this is this is positive news. Um, and huge, huge recognition to Rotnium, uh, whose efforts have been crucial in starting, operating, and continuing this endeavor. So, Rotnium will, uh, will be a speaker, remote speaker at Monerotopia. He was last year as well, and trying to uh, arrange a Monero talk with him so, to learn more awesome. about, about this. He does a lot of important stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the last thing, you ha if you haven't, um, you should definitely listen to Donald Trump's and Elon Musk's cool conversation. Um, we talk about the assassination. It was live on Twitter just a couple of days ago. I did not listen in yet. Was it was it good? Any I halfway through? Really interesting. Like he talks, it, it's he was funny too. He talked about his relationship with uh, Putin, and uh, he said at one point that he told Putin a couple things, to which Putin said no way, and Trump responded with way. <laughs> I thought that was really funny, um, and he talked about that they had a really good relationship during his presidency. Um, he had a good relationship with Kim Jong Un. Uh, North Korea, um, you know, he was saying that the war in Ukraine wouldn't wouldn't have happened if he was the president. Talks about um, Biden, Kamala, the assassination. Quite, um, he talked quite a bit about the assassination and uh, what happened and um, everything. Um, but it's not halfway through. But it's I, I'm gonna finish it today. It's really interesting. When I first saw it, I didn't think that it was real, like Elon Musk and Donald Trump, and I just got a notification. Mm. Yeah, 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 but it's quite like surreal to just hear Donald Trump live on a X space 
I've been I've been really off the radar in a in a good way <laughs> with everything because of being no, here. Just <laughs> late. I mean, it's funny, you know, because I I'm still checking my phone. I'm doing a lot of uh, you know, I do work from from here for my fiat job, but then like I guess I'm just not on Twitter as much right now, which is good. Overall, I'm just not good. on my phones on my phones as much. I'm just well, um, you're not missing out on much. Yeah, no, it's fantastic, but it gives you it, it, like it kind of gives you a different perspective. It like pulls you pulls you out of the matrix, so to speak, right? Like it's 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 nice to disconnect like that. So yeah, I don't even know if I'm gonna go back and watch it. Cipher Bliss tipped four ninety nine. Douglas buys groceries with Monero, and now we have XMR chat. A pivotal moment is near. Every time you use XMR, the matrix gets weaker. One hundred percent, man. Thank you, XMR Bliss. Fantastic. We'll put that five dollars towards growing XMRChat.com. Sweet. Awesome. Um, yeah, guys. So this was this week's news section. Um, again, if you haven't bought your Monero Utopia uh, tickets, go ahead. You can buy the regular ones. You can buy the VIP ones, which you get, you get access to uh, the dinner and a bunch of different stuff. And if you use 2024, you are going to get a discount. So yeah, go ahead and use it. If you haven't yet, hopefully we're going to see you there. And um, we'll see you next week for the news section.